ensure that we have a cadre of people, our talents, to propel the economy going forward. Our country for the next 10 to 50 years, the future of this country depends on our youth. You know, people like us, we wouldn't, people like myself, we wouldn't be here many years from now. It is the youth, they are the ones that need to step forward and take this country. Now what my, my uh, urge for the young people is that whilst you still study, garner as much knowledge as possible, open your eyes to the world outside, get as much information from other countries, build your, your skill gap, because only when you have that, then only you have a capability to step back into national building. And so the future for this country is the youth, really. I think education is absolutely key. Now, you graduate, you come into the workplace. It's about really contributing by doing the job. Whether it's a government job, or whether it's a private sector job, the youth, they are the future of this country. On the NKRA, we were very clear that the choice of what constitutes an NKRA is what the public, what the people of Malaysia want us to focus on. When we first started, the public opinion centered around the six NKRA, crime, corruption, rural basic infrastructure, urban public transport, low income household and education. Now today, listening to the public, they're now telling us loud and clear that cost of living is another one that needs to be put on the pedestal. So we've included it in because that is the public opinion and we believe the public is right in saying as global commodity prices rise and then we need to make sure that the country position itself and take the right measures to address this. Not for now but also in the future. So that's why we included this. With regards to the economic transformation program, we will only include those sectors in the future that we believe will then be able to deliver tremendous gross national income. So if we believe a sector that we have not put much emphasis on, is suddenly we discovered that our original prognosis was not right, and that that sector is flourishing at the level that we think we can even make grow more gross national income, then I think it will be included amongst the, those that we have today. And so currently there are 12. It's very important to make sure we stay focused no high-income nation achieve that status by wanting to be good in all sectors. As that is the lesson learned in the US, in France, in other countries, that they have to be extremely focused on the sectors that will help to grow the national income, the gross national income. So that's why the 12 were chosen. I think the public is realizing today that what the government is doing is delivering the results. So in one year of work so far in GDP, the Government Transformation Program, most of the promises that we set out to deliver, we fulfilled. And for example, i give you an example. We built the most kilometers of rural road last year in any given year, 793 kilometers of rural road. We had the best UPSR result in four years. For the first time in four years, we brought down crime. Crime rates have gone down by 35%. And overall, crime has gone down by 15%. And there are many, many firsts as a result. So I believe public perception will be shaped positively based on results. So the results beginning to show we've only just begun. We only have one year of implementing it. With the leadership of the Prime Minister and the whole cabinet pushing it forward, I am convinced that we will be able to continue this very good start. Let me turn now to the Economic Transformation Program, which was launched on the 15th of November. In a short period of time of implementing this, the leading indicator has to be the level of investments. 170 billion ringgit of investment has been committed predominantly by the private sector. And for a period of just less than a year, 170 billion ringgit of investment is a record high. Never before in our history that kind of total avalanche of investment has come into our country in terms of commitment. So I think going forward, the indications are in a short period of time as we've begun the economic transformation program and the government transformation program, the signs are very positive that we are on the right path. 
think Pemandu like any other organization, my belief is Pemandu wish is there if we add value. There is no reason for Pemandu to exist if we do not add value. And so my, my the people in my team, there's 127 of us all together in the team, we strive to make sure that we add value. I would be the first person to put up the hands if we don't add value, we shouldn't be here. And I think most agencies such as ours, we are there to make sure that we add value for the cost, which is a national policy.